There's something about the old hymns of the church. I wish I had some church folk in here talk back to me. Something about the old hymns of the church that have stood the test of time. And when you found yourself in a jam, you didn't look for nothing with no hip hop beat to it. You look for something that has some meaning to it that can get you through the night. Good afternoon, so Sister Williams. Yes, same all same is well. I trust the Sunday. same for you. There is a name I love to hear. Yeah. I love to see its word. Yeah. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweet Great. Are you a grandma yet? Yes, God. The sinner's perfect plea. Yes, God. Oh, how I love you. God bless you, Pastor Thompson. Good to see you. Sister Williams, keep me posted. Thank you, Jesus. Audrey, good to see you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Good afternoon, saints, and thank you for being a part of our worship experience today. If you would go ahead and turn to Second Chronicles chapter 7, 
after I pray, we're going to have a conversation today. Amen. I'm excited about what the Lord is saying in his written word today. If you would go ahead and turn to Second Chronicles chapter 7 as I seek the Lord in prayer. God, we love you today. And we bless you for your presence, your power. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy. Bless you, God, for waking us up today in our right mind. Thank you for giving us the activities of our li our limbs. We just bless you, Jesus, that out of all the other places we could have been today, we chose to come and be in your presence. So bless us while we're here. Speak to us while we're here. Renew our hearts and our minds. Renew our relationship with you, Jesus. We ask God that you would create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Sanctify our ears and our minds and our hearts as we hear the word of God on today. Make it alive for us. Give us the strength to apply it to our lives as we live out this journey called life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, saints, good afternoon to each of you. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7. We're going to look at verses 1 through 3. God bless you, Sister Riggins. We're going to look at verse, and then back over again at verses 11 through 16. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 through 3 and 11 through 17 say, When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Verse 11. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. And Solomon successfully accomplished all that came into his heart and to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land now my eyes will be open and my ear attentive to prayer made in this place for now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. That is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Today I want to have a discussion, just a conversation as it were from the thought you have got to do the work. Amen. You've got to do the work. We are still in our series Mindset Matters. This is our worship number two. In essence we have and this is our fourth lesson in the series that mindset matters. And um, so today I want to have a conversation. I want to talk about what it takes for you to do the work. I want to talk about um, the fact that there is a condition attached to the blessing. So as I am preparing weekly to teach the, the remainder of the series on mindset matters and I'm seeking the heart of God about which way um, I need to speak to the saints concerning uh, what God is saying in the earth at this time. God this week was dealing with me about the fact that the saints of God are not putting enough work in. You may as well say amen. I know it's true. God doesn't speak a thing except it's true. 
He said that the saints of God are not putting enough work in. There are not uh, enough of us that are putting the work in so that the necessary changes can happen in our lives. All of us are about the business of receiving blessings from God. We, we all want something from him. We want Jesus to bless us in some way. We want Jesus to intercede for us as he sits on the right hand of the father in some way. We all want God to do his part in the plan of salvation, but he wants to know when is the last time that you have done your part? When is the last time you have fasted and prayed? When is the last time you visited the sick? When is the last time you've gone out of your comfort zone for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ? When is the last time that you have sought the heart of God and you say, well, you know what, God, there's more that I could do, but I'm being lazy and, and, and I'm just not going to do it. God, there's more that I could do, but I, I'm just not in the place where I really just want to do. God says this, that he is about the business of getting everything in our hands that we ask for, but we have got to put some work in. So as I was looking at this seventh chapter of second Chronicles and you know, everybody's hollering shouts about seven fourteen. you know, if my people call by my name, humble themselves and pray. And that is a good shouting point that I, I, I don't take that away from the power of the word. That is a good shouting point. But if we visit all of the verses before that, and the verses after that, we see why God said what he was saying to Solomon. Solomon had just finished completing a job that his father David could not do. Now that's enough to shout about right there because can I say to you that some of you will complete a job that the people in your family were not able to do? Yeah, that's shoutable stuff right there. God will use you to do something that people in your family wish that they could have done. They've talked about it, they prayed about it, but was nobody was about it but you. And when it came down to when the rubber met the road, God said, you are the one. God said, Solomon, David couldn't do it because David was so wrapped up in his flesh. David was so wrapped up in, in gratifying his own sexual desire. He missed what God wanted him to do. God wanted him to rebuild the temple just like David was rebuilding Israel, but David missed it. And he told David, because I love you, because you are a man after my own heart, the, 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 um, the kingdom will always rule through your family. There'll always be a king from your bloodline sitting on the throne, hence Solomon. Solomon was the promise of God to David. Bless your name, Jesus. David had to die for the promise to live. I, that, that's sh shout right there. Amen. David had to die for the promise to live. Understand, David had to do the work. There's some work that David had to do, and because he was not able to complete the work, the burden of it lay on Solomon. I wonder how many people today have the burden of their family who didn't finish something laying on them. I wonder how many of us have the burden of deliverance that our family should have gone through but did not receive laying on us. I wonder how many of us have the burden of ministry that people in our family did not pick up laying on us because you are the one. There's a condition to the blessing. So here Solomon was rebuilding the temple that his father left behind. And the word of God says that when Solomon had finished praying, now the temple was complete or completed. After the temple was completed, Solomon went in prayer. The word of God says, and when he had finished praying for the temple, right there in the presence of the people, that fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering. And the sacrifices. Remember, I always tell you, when you come before the presence of God, you never come empty handed. You never come without a praise. You never come without an offering. You never come without a something in the presence of God. Because you have to offer up God something for his presence to come down. Now, I know people sing this song, when the praises go up, that's not what God's talking about. He's talking about a tangible offering. <coughs> Bless your name, Jesus. He's talking about a tangible offering. Solomon had prepared this offering. He prayed the word of God said the fire came down, consumed the offering and the sacrifice. And it wasn't until after the offering and the sacrifice was consumed, the word says that the glory of God filled the temple. Wow. I just wanted to have a conversation, nothing too deep today, may not get to a hoop and a holler today, but I wanted to lay some precepts down to let us know why God is not moving the way that we want him to move in our lives. 
why he's not moving the way we want him to move in our nation, in our finances, in our health, because we're not following the prescription that God has placed in the word. The word said that Solomon prayed. God received the prayer. The fire came down from heaven. It lapped up the, off, the, um, the sacrifice and the offering. And after that, he said, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Can I tell you that the glory of the Lord filled the temple because Solomon's sacrifice was pleasing to God? My God from Zion. His sacrifice was pleasing to God. And because his sacrifice was pleasing to God, then God showed up in the temple. Can I say to you that the reason why God is not showing up for some of us is because our sacrifices are not pleasing. The offering that we're bringing to God is not pleasing. Instead of giving him the first of everything, instead of giving him our everything, we're bringing him what we have left. We're bringing him a tired praise. We're bringing him a leftover offering. We're giving him the end of everything. When God says, what I want from you, what I need from you is the first of everything. I need your first morning praise. I need your first financial blessing. I need your first sacrifice. I need you to give me back the tenth of everything that I've given you, not just your finance. I need everything that you that I've given you to come back to me as a sacrifice. So when we fail to give God back what belongs to him, then we cannot, he cannot completely come into the place that he's supposed to dwell. Are you hearing me today? Y'all talking slow, so I must be talking right. When we don't give God everything that he deserves, then he doesn't show up in the fullness that he can show up. Well, apostle, does that mean he's not going to show up? That's not what the word said. The word indicates that God does not show up in the fullness in which he can show up when the offering and the sacrifices and the prayers are not properly made to God. Then the word of God says this in verse two says, and the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. He said that the, the word of God, the written word of God says that the power and the glory of God was so strong in the house that even the people that were ordained to be there could not get in the house. This is what I aim holistic to be. I aim for holistic to be so filled with the presence and the power of God that people can't hardly come in the door. That when they step out of the grounds, that they get healed, delivered, and set free. That when our life comes on, the chains of bondages are broken, that yokes are destroyed because the power and the presence of God has shown up through our praying, through our offering, and through our sacrifices. I want God to show up in spite of who we are. I want him to show up because of who he is. And in order for him to do that, we've got to set the house of God in a certain order. Solomon had already built the temple. It had already been dedicated to God. But now God said, I need you to take a step further. I need you to take your dedication. I need you to take your devotion a step further. And I need you to allow me to consume the sacrifice. My God. How many of us have allowed God to consume the sacrifice? How many of us have stayed in the place of God so much that when the spirit and the presence of God come in, you can smell his aroma. You can feel the weight of his glory sitting on you. You know that God has entered the room, not because you said a weak amen, but because you gave God all you had. Because you laid down your flesh and you allowed your spirit to rise up. You laid down all of you so that all of him could live. You went to him with a broken spirit and a contrite heart and you said, God, I need you to inhabit this temple. Yes, Solomon was talking about a physical place, but God is saying in you, in this mindset matters. I need for you to allow me to inhabit this temple in order for this temple to be a place that is pleasing to God. You You've got to lay down everything else so that the spirit of God can live in this temple. You've got to sacrifice your flesh. You've got to sacrifice all of you that wants to do what you want to do, how you want to do, when you want to do it. And you've got to say, God, you be glorified. God said, I don't want you to leave the house today. You said, but God, I got to pay some bills. But God, I'm going to do what you say and you be glorified. And God is such a man of order that he will give you favor with everything and everybody that you have to work with or pay bills with or do whatever. Today, when you sacrifice your time and say, okay, God, I heard you. You told me not to leave the house today. And because I want to put the work in, I'm not going to leave today. 
When is the last time God auctioned you to do something and your flesh overrode the power and the presence of God? I wait. When is the last time God asked for your attention and asked for your prayer time and you had so much other stuff on your plate, you were so busy being busy that we didn't have time for God? May as well say, man, I know it's true. How many times have other things taken precedence over what God is saying? It's a football game on. It's a baseball game on. I need to go cook for the kids. I need to run to the store. I need to. I need to. I need to. But God says, I need you. He said, I need you to put the work in. I need your presence. You want me to show up, but I'm waiting for you to show up. Solomon was about the business of showing up. And when Solomon showed up the way that God wanted him to show up, God superseded his expectation to show up. My God from Zion. The word of God says this, that when the people of God recognized the power of God, that they bowed on their faces and they began to worship God. Not even in the temple. They didn't go in the temple to worship. Right where they were, the power and the presence of God was so strong and so evident that it pushed them on their faces to worship. When is the last time you have been in the presence of God in such a way that his presence caused you to bow down? My Lord. I'm not talking about running around the church. I'm not talking about that cute little fast shout that everybody got going on now. I'm talking about when is the last time, bless your name, I feel the Holy Ghost. When is the last time that your conversation with God was so powerful you had to stop what you were doing and say, God, you know what? I surrender this thing to you. God, you know what? Everything else got to stop because I hear you speaking, Jesus. When is the last time your relationship and conversation with him was so important that you realized, God, I've been missing you all along. God, I thought I was hearing you when you said this. But now that I'm really hearing you, I'm realizing you wasn't saying that at all. You were trying to get me to change my mindset. God, my family was telling me to do it this way and I was following them because I, I was trying to do what my mama or my grandma told me to do. But the reality is I'm supposed to be following you for my mindset to shift. I've got to shift from what I was taught. And I've got to shift into what God is saying. Is, is anybody hearing me today? I got to shift from what's familiar to what can be uncomfortable so I can get the full measure of the blessing of God. I don't want to be the one that gets to heaven and see a room with my name on it. And, and it says, oh, well, Agnes, you could have had all this while you were in the earth. I want to be the one that when I get to heaven, everything that I was supposed to have there, I already enjoyed while I was in the earth realm. But it only happens when we change our mindset and we allow heaven to infiltrate our temple so that it can be visible in the earth. Are you with me today? Somebody say amen so I know you're there. So Solomon had rebuilt this temple and the people had recognized the power and the presence of God. And the people were in worship and God received their worship. And the word of God says that Solomon had a conversation where well, God had this conversation with Solomon. said that Solomon in verse 11 had finished the house of the Lord and he finished his house. And Solomon successfully accomplished everything that God told him to do. But then God came back to Solomon and had another conversation. He says that the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. And said to him, I have heard your prayer. In other words, he says, I have received the offering that you've given me. He said, and I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. In other words, God is saying to Solomon, he said, I heard what you've been praying. I receive what you're saying. Because I receive it, I have chosen this place, this temple as my house of worship as a house of sacrifice to me. He says, now, when I shut up heaven, remember, he's telling Solomon, I already received you as mine. But there is a condition for the blessing 
called me, my God from Zion. There is a condition on a blessing called me. I need y'all to hear that in the Holy Ghost because some of us are giving us away to too many people. Some of us are giving the blessing of us away to too many things. Some of us are giving the blessing of our time away to things that make no difference. And God went to Solomon and said, listen, I want to spend time with you because I'm a blessing for you. But this is what I need to know. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or I command the locusts to devour the land and send pestilence among the people. He's saying the enemy is not going to test you. Did you hear me? He said, the enemy is not going to test you. The famine will not come from the enemy. The famine will not come from the government. The famine will not come from all these other places. He says, but when I send these things, are you hearing what I'm saying? Saints of God, there's work to do. Because when we in the body of Christ think that everything that's going on in the world is a result of what Satan is doing in the world, then we have lost sight of who God is. We have lost sight of the omniscient power of God. When we think that everything that's going on in the world is because of the hand of Satan, what we are saying is that Satan is more powerful than God. And I've come to tell you, saints of God, that is a lie from the pits of hell. We need to understand everything that is taking place in your life, everything that's taking place in my life, everything good and bad that's taking place in the life of the world as we know it, it is because God has made a decision to shut up heaven. I know that doesn't sound like what they're preaching. I know you probably never heard it before, but if you're looking at the same word that I'm looking at, God said these things will happen as a result of me shutting up heaven. Are you understanding? Yes, you can pay your tithe. Yes, you can pay your offering. Yes, you can have a real cute fast dance. But can I tell you that there will be a season in this thing that we call life that God will shut up heaven. Don't let anybody fool you. Don't let the prosperity gospel fool you. Don't let this message of naming and claim it fool you. If you live long enough, like my grandma would say, if you live long enough, you will experience a season where God will shut up heaven. How do I know it? Because that's what the word said. Verse 13, when I, he didn't say if I, when is a definite. Are you understanding? When means it will happen. When means it will happen more than one time. He says, when I shut up heaven and there is no. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Saints of God, we, just because you find yourself in lack, just because you find yourself in famine, does not mean that you've done anything wrong. Sometimes God has just shut up heaven because he needs for you to put some work in. My Lord from Zion. He needs you to put some work in. <coughs> he needs for you to put the work in. He said, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain <coughs> or command the locusts, locusts are devouring animals. They're insects that come and they just eat up crops. They literally come in, they kind of look like flies and they, they land on something like a whole crop of, of corn, let's say, or wheat. And the locusts do not leave that field until they've eaten the field all the way down to the ground. My God, did you hear me? Some of us have lived through locust experience where it seemed like, God, the more I have, the more I, have, the more I lose. The more I love, the more people hate me. The more right I try to be, seem like the more wrong that shows up. What is that? That is locust. Why is it locust? Because God has allowed it. Because we've got to learn how to put the work in. We've got to learn how to be able. Job said it this, that, this way. Shall we always receive good of God and never bad? Shall we always be, my grandma said, be on the flowery bed of ease? Do we think we're never going to go through anything? Saints of God, you got to put the work in. When the locusts come, let's say most of the time they come in from Africa and come over into the United States, we already know that they come to devour something. 
But just because something is devoured does not mean that there is a presence of life. You better shout right there. I said just because something is devoured does not mean that there is a lack of the presence of life. God said you need to know. This is what I like about him. Because in essence he's saying if I shut up heaven, then I have the power to open it up again. If I call the locusts to come, then I have the voice and the power to call the locusts back. If I allow the rain to stop, then I have the power to allow the rain to come again. If I allow the pestilence to come, then I have the power to call the pestilence back to myself. But saints of God, we have gotten so weak because we don't know the word of God. We've gotten so weak because we don't understand the power of the true and living God. That everything that comes upon the face of the earth, we run and we hide in a cave. We run and we forget that God is almighty. We run and we seek answers for this and answers for that. But how many times do we go to God and say, give me a remedy for this? My heart goes out to the women that have mothers now, that are mothers now, with new babies. And all over the news you hear Shortage on infant formula. Shortage on infant formula. And I ask God, did they come to you and ask you how to get milk? Did anybody seek the heart of God and figure out how am I supposed to feed my baby? Or did we run to, to the internet and social media and try to figure out how can I this and how can I that? And everybody getting upset because there appears to be a lack of milk. But did anybody go to God who has all of the resources? He says, I have cattle on a thousand hills. He says that I will bless you according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He said, I can do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that worketh within you. How many of us sought God for the power? All the while, the men and the women of God are warning you, prepare, prepare. Save up. Don't spend all your money. Get water. Get non-perishable items. It's no need for me to get powdered milk because I don't have little babies. But if you're a mother, when your leader tell you to store up, milk should have been one of the things that you stored up on. My God from Zion, don't shout me down while I'm preaching good. If you have little children, the things that little kids like should have been the things that you should have been storing up on. Instead of calling every prophet a lying prophet, instead of laughing at the prophetic and saying that this, instead of saying that there's no power in God, what about going to him and say, God, I got this baby at my house and this baby going to need some milk. God, I need you to produce what my child needs to live. The enemy hadn't shut up anything. He doesn't have that kind of power. The government has not shut up anything. They don't have that kind of power. I'm talking about mindset. Are y'all with me? Somebody put in the comments, say mindset matters. I'm talking about your mindset. You've got to prepare for what's coming. That's you putting the work in. You got to get on your face before God and you got to ask God what's coming so you can always be ahead of the curve. This is God having a conversation with Solomon after everybody have spent seven days rejoicing because the temple was complete. God said, yeah, the temple is complete, but the work ain't done yet. My God from Zion. He said, the temple is completed, but the work is not finished yet. Yeah, you didn't raise children, but your work ain't finished yet. Yeah, you done preached real good, but the work ain't finished yet. Yeah, you done prayed real good, but the work ain't finished yet. He said, when I shut up heaven, can I tell you, saints of God, what you, you're seeing in the earth is the mighty hand of God stretching into the earth to let us know that he is still in full control. You better shout right there. I said what we are seeing in the earth is the mighty hand of God stretching into the earth to let us know that he still has full control. Only God can cause to happen what we're seeing happen in the earth. And only God is going to be able to stop it. Did you hear me? Only God, see, God needs us to work in the earth so that he can work his plan in the earth. This is why Solomon, God is having this conversation with Solomon. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, when I shut up heaven and the locusts come, when I shut up heaven and the pestilence come, if. 
See, the when is concrete. The if is conditional. Did you hear me? My God from Zion. The when is for certain. The concrete is the condition. God says, I will certainly shut up heaven, but will you pray? He says, I will certainly cause pestilence to come. But if I do it, will you do something? I will certainly call lo cause locusts to eat up your field. But when I do it, what are you going to do? He says, if my people. This is God telling Solomon, I know everybody who was at the temple today don't belong to me. Bless your name, Jesus. This is God telling Solomon, I know everybody bowing their head to the ground in worship is not my people. My God from Zion. And this is God telling Solomon, I know everyone paying their tithe is not my people. Say, so God, you better hear me. This is God telling Solomon, I know everyone that has a form of godliness is not my people. What, what are you saying, apostle? He said, if my people who are called by my name would do something. Did you hear me? He didn't say run scared. He didn't say seek the government for the answer. He didn't even say seek your apostle for the answer. He said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, why in the world would God use humility as the first requirement for him to begin to even hear before he healed? My God. Why? Because it is in humility where you bow and say, God, you know what? You are in control of what's going on in this entire circumstance. You are in control of the food chain supply. You are in control of the water supply. You are in control of the infant formula. You are in control. God, I humble myself before you and I say to you today that you are in control of it all. God said, so wait a minute, there it is. There it is. There goes humility right there. Because when you tell God, Lord, you are in control, what you're saying is I'm taking my hands off of it. And however you seek to turn this thing around, God is all right with me. What you're saying is, God, I don't have the answer. I've been trying to look for the answer. I've been searching for the answer. I've been on social media just like everybody else. God, there is no answer. So I submit and humble myself to the fact that you are the answer. He said, if they would, number one, humble themselves and pray. So you can't even pray right until you humble. My God. This is why Jesus says don't pray like the religious leaders do because they use these really big words to make people think that they are somewhere in God where they are not. I feel deliverance. God was saying what I need you to do. I need you to pray to me from a humble place. I need you to pray from a place where you know I'm in control. I need you to pray from a place where you trust me for everything because you realize you have nothing. Y'all, I want y'all to think about this for a minute. Like for real, think about this. In the last two years and two months, five million people died from a plague that God allowed you to live through. Shout right there. Glory to your name. Did you hear me? I said over the last two years and two months, worldwide, over five million people died from a plague that God allowed you to live through. Hallelujah. And I tell God, thank you. Bless you. Listen, if that don't humble you, there ain't no humility in you. If you are not humble by the fact, you know, the song used to sing it before this pestilence came about. He said, the song said, millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Bless your name, God. The song said, millions did not make it, but I was one of the ones that did. Don't you understand that God allowed you to live for purpose? God allowed you to live through a plague for a purpose. He allowed you to live so you could put some work in. 
He allowed you to live so that spirit of humility could live in you. He allowed you to live so you would give him honor, glory, praise. He allowed you to live so you could understand he shut up heaven, but he still blessed you. He sent the locusts, but he still blessed you. He allowed the pestilence, but he still blessed you. He allowed the plague, but he still blessed you. Why? Because it's time to put some work in. God wants us to put work in. I understand that I don't always come across with a message that's going to make you shout. That's not my job to make you shout. Bless your name, Jesus. Now, there are preachers that'll make you shout and dance and turn cartwheels. And I, it's easy to do that too. But my job is to bring enlightenment so that your eyes are open. My job in this series to teach you is that mindset matters. And your mind needs to change about what God is saying. Your mind needs to change about seeing the hand of God working in the earth. I need you to understand, even when you see these uh, CNN and these other news uh, places on TV playing, you need to remind yourself that nothing is happening in the earth except God give it permission to happen. Did you hear me? There is no evil rising in the earth unless God allows it. There is nobody rising to power in the earth unless God allows it. The word of God said it this way. He said he sent rain when the earth is dry. So even when we're complaining about this, it's too hot. It's too hot. Oh, it's too hot. It's too hot. God said when he sees that the earth is too dry, he'll send the rain. Are you hearing me? When he feels and knows that it's too hot for us, he'll send a cool breeze. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It is work to be done. And sometimes we've got to learn how to let our flesh die so that the spirit of God can live. The enemy is not wreaking havoc on the earth. God is allowing us to see how great and powerful he is. What you see is only going to be for a season. And when God has had enough, my God from Zion, Satan even knows that there is an appointed time for him. Are you hearing me? When God has had enough, then he's going to answer by fire. My God. This is what he said. If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. He said, and seek my face. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that there's prayer and then there's seeking his face? Oh my God. That explains why people don't really know what the heart of God is. Because we're so busy praying for stuff that we never stop to seek his face. My God. He said, this is the prescription for the people that belong to me. Humble yourself, pray, seek my face. He said, and then you've got to turn from your wicked ways. There in the book of Acts, God said, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Converted means to turn. It means to completely turn away from the things that you used to do and face toward the new way. Face toward this new thing. God told Solomon, the people are going to have to turn. In other words, he said, I know these people belong to me, but they still have some issues that they need to turn from. My God from Zion. Say to God, what am I saying? We've got to stop expecting that the people that come to God have got it all together. We've got to stop expecting that the people that come and give the pastor their hand and God their heart has got it all together because the word of God clearly says that even after you come to me, it's some things you got to turn from. This is the prescription. This is the work that you've got to put in. He says, and after you have done all that, then I'm going to do something. See, we tie God's hands in the earth. We make it so that God can't do all that he wants to do in the earth because we don't follow the prescription. We don't follow the plan of God. And when we don't follow the plan and things don't turn out like we want them to turn out, then all of a sudden, so and so and so is a lying prophet. Or oh, well, maybe God didn't say that. Maybe I missed God. What about maybe you didn't follow the directions? Maybe your mindset didn't change. Maybe you really didn't believe what God was saying to you. Maybe you didn't trust that God was a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. 
Maybe you didn't believe that God is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Maybe you didn't believe that the wealth of the righteous was laid up for the just. Maybe you didn't believe the word of God and because your faith was not at, the, at, at your asking level, then God was not able to produce what you were asking for. Shout right there. I said, maybe your faith was not at your asking level. And because it was not at your asking level, then God was not able to produce what you were asking him for. See, you got to put the work in. You got to do the work. God says, this is what you need to do. And I'm going to sit back in heaven. And I'm waiting for you to do a thing so I can do a thing. I'm waiting on you to believe me so I can do a thing. I'm waiting on you to seek me so I can release a thing. Say to God, you've got to put the work in. The elders of the church can't just come in and always lay hands on you and you get healed. You've got to put the work in. God not going to just always send somebody to bless your hand with a financial blessing. You've got to put the work in. God is not going to always send a ram in the bush. You've got to put the work in. He said, if my people will call by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, he says, then I will. I will means without a doubt. I will means that God has signed in blood his name on the line called your life. And he cannot go against his word. I will means when you follow the precepts laid out in the written word of God, then the person of God is bound by his word to do what he said. If you want to know why it's not working out for you, go back to the word of God. Find the prescription that God has given you for an issue. Work that prescription in your life. And because God is a man that cannot lie, he said, I will hear. Did you hear me? Because he is not a man that can go back on his word. God said, I will hear. Because he's not a God that can change his mind. He said, I will hear from heaven. He said, I will forgive their sin and I will heal the land. <coughs> We're so busy wanting God to heal the land that we're not willing to do what it takes to get to the healing. Amazingly enough, when COVID-19 first came upon the land, you heard Psalm 91 more than you had ever heard it before. Somewhere along the way, we got lazy. We're just talking. Somewhere along the way, we got lax in our belief in God. Somewhere along the way, the saints of God, instead of having the power of God that he promised living on the inside of us, we begin to run scared from something. Y'all may as well say, man, I know I'm talk telling the truth. The saints of God, not all of us, but the saints of God, when we should have been following this four-step prescription from God, was running and hiding from what the earth, what was on the earth. Instead of trusting God, we were running and hiding from what was on the earth. Instead of believing God, we were reciting Psalm 91 and still living in fear. We were still saying, oh, and when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. And we were still living in fear. We were re re reciting these words, the written words from God, and we still had no power because we were not willing to put the work in. I remember being in my house and laying on my face and my sons had got accustomed to seeing me cry out to God and hearing me cry out to God. So it wasn't anything strange for them to see me pray like that. But I began to wonder, God. If the saints of God, you know, the people that are called by his name, if we all were praying in one accord, the same thing, if we were all praying in the same voice, the same thing, 
If we were all believing you for the same thing, then this thing that we call COVID-19, this thing that we call poverty, this thing that we call cancer, this, I feel deliverance, this thing that we call depression should have lifted up off of the earth. <coughs> But why can't it? Because we're not following the prescription of God. And those of us that are following it, it has become such a regimen. It has become so routine. It has become so traditional that we're not even allowing the power of God to operate in what we're saying. My God from Zion. Mindset matters. His word is just not a book of rituals that you recite because your light bill do. His word says that it is a lamp unto your feet. He says his word is a light unto your path. It says his word is bread in a starving land. He says his word is water when you're thirsty. He says his word will be your mother and father when they forsake you. He, he said his word is life when you are dying. He said his word is everything that you need. And here we are just throwing out word and throwing out word with no power behind it. God said because you're not putting the work in. In other words, he's saying you're not changing your mind concerning the word. God said, I can't eat. Verse 16, 15. Now my eyes will be open and my ear attentive to prayer made in this place. But his eyes can't be open and his ears can't be attentive if we don't first humble ourselves. I feel deliverance. If we don't first pray. If we don't first seek his face. If we don't first turn from our wicked ways. Do you know how many people tell me they watch my live while they're drinking mixed cocktails and cooking out and smoking cigarettes and doing all other kind of things. But, I'm, but I'm, I'm still listening to the word. How is that possible? How is it possible for you to light up a cigarette in the presence of God on his live virtual worship service and you say that you are in the presence of God? You got to put the work in. When did it become okay for us to sit back and cross our legs with brown liquor or white liquor, whatever your preference is, and watch the word of God and think that you are receiving and being able to consume the word of God. When you are sitting there in your flesh, there is no way that you can receive. I'm not talking about those people that have issues and, and folks said, you know what? I was in the bar and I heard TBN or I heard somebody pray and the word changed my life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about you people who are intentional about lighting up a cigarette. And getting a drink during a worship service. When you are intentional about laying in your bed during a worship service. When you are intentional about washing dishes and cooking and doing everything else during a worship service. When your mind should be stayed on Jesus during the worship experience. You know why? Because the world has tricked us. To be behind these computer screens and on these conference calls and on these Zoom calls. And we are no longer in our houses of worship. And because we are not in the houses of worship, we are not putting the time in. Come to God any kind of way. Roll out of the bed. Don't even prepare yourself for worship. And you want God to honor that. You roll out of the bed with any kind of attitude. Oh, well, it's three o'clock apostle on the live. So let me get on the live. Your heart not ready. You haven't spent any time in prayer. You haven't consecrated yourself. You just showing up because it's show up time. Say it's time to put work in. God said you going through what you going through because I didn't shut up heaven. So you looking around and seeing everybody else blessed. Maybe God hadn't shut up heaven for them. Maybe God hadn't allowed locusts to come into their field. Maybe pestilence is not alive in their land. 
Your job is not to look over and see why it is that Sister Williams is so blessed. Your job is to look at the matter of your own heart and ask God, what's happening that heaven is shut up for me? God says, and it's shut up because you're not walking in the precepts of God. Yeah, you're walking it out with your mouth, but your heart is far from it. Or you're walking it out because you can quote scripture, but your heart is far from You know, listen, my four-year-old knows his alphabet, right? He's just learned his alphabet. But the reality is he really doesn't know them. He knows how to recite them. And there's a difference between knowing the alphabet and reciting the alphabet. Are you hearing me? So when we sing the alphabet song, he's great. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But on my refrigerator, I have all 26 letters of the alphabet. And sometimes when I'm cooking, he'll say, Mommy, can we play the alphabet game? And I'm like, yeah, let's play the alphabet game. So he'll stand in front of the refrigerator and I'll say, point to the letter C. And he's like, hmm, I know that, I know that, I know that. And he'll point to an O. And I'm like, no, nope, try it again. And he'll say, mm, I know that, I know that. And he'll go and go and go and he'll point to an L. And I'm like, no, Rudy, that's not it. Let's try it again. Sometimes he has to look for the letter, letter C five and six times before he gets it, right? But he know how to recite A, B, C, D. And the Lord began to show me even while I was standing there cooking and trying to get him to learn his ABCs, that there are many people in the house of God that can recite the scriptures, but they don't know the word. My God, there is no power in reciting it. The power is in knowing it. Once Takari gets the power of knowing his alphabet, that when once he learns his alphabet, the power of knowing his alphabet will be able, will be that he knows how to read. Are you understanding? You, you go from reciting to knowing to reading. Did you hear me? Thanks to God, we have got to grow beyond the reciting stage. It bothers my spirit that the saints of God can recite the word of God, but they have no understanding when it comes to the things of God. So you can have no power when you don't understand what you don't understand. You got to put the work in. What does that mean? That means you got to turn your TV off. You got to turn your devices off and you got to get the word of God and you got to plow through the word of God and you got to keep reading and keep reading and keep applying and asking God, how does this fit into my life? How does this make me a better person? How is this different than what I was taught? God, teach me. God, train me. God, make me better. God, show me how to put the work in. Show me how not to think that everything is a demon. Show me how not to think that everybody coming after me. God, show me your will for my life through the written word of God. Show me what you would have for me to do through the written word of God. Show me how to hide your word in my heart, God. I love you and I want you to hide your word in my heart. God, I don't know how to do that. Show me. Because there is coming a season and already is. When God will shut up heaven again. And there will be no rain again. And the locusts will come again. And the pestilence will come again. And he wants to know that when I cause these things, what's your response going to be, pastor? When I cause these things, What's going to be your response, Sister Williams, Sister Riggins, Carolyn, Audrey, Evangelist Livingston? What's going to be your response when I cause these things to happen? What, what's going to be your response when you go to the grocery store and there's really nothing on the shelf? What's going to be your response when the there's a rolling blackout across the United States? What's going to be your response when you go into places to eat and clothes signs going to be on the door? What shall your response be? 
What will be your response when and if martial law takes over and the military is telling you what time you can leave home and what time you can come back? What's going to be your response when they for real shut down church in the United States? Where are you going to be when you can't find a hiding place, as my grandma would say? Mindset matters. You need to find yourself in the word of God. You need to find yourself hidden in the word of God. Do you know the word says? That there is coming a day where things are going to be so bad, you're going to want to die, you're going to beg God to die, and you ain't going to be able to die. The word of God said we're going to run to the mountain and beg God to let the mountain fall on us, and we're not going to be able to find a hiding place. God said, when I allow these things to happen, what's going to be your response? When the world doesn't look like it used to look anymore, what's going to be your response? Saints of God, God is looking to heal the land and he wants to do it. He can only do it through us. God can only heal the land through us. We who are called by his name. Saints of God, there is a condition attached to the blessing. And you and I have got to learn how to put the work in. And the season that we are in and that we are approaching, God is calling us, I say to you prophetically, God is calling us to fast and pray more than we've ever fasted and prayed before. Did you hear me? Will the saints of God be blessed? Yes, we will. Will we live above the famine? Yes, we will. But God is still calling us to fast and pray. Y'all better hear me. He's calling us to sanctify our eye gate. He's calling us to sanctify our ear gate. He's calling us to be set aside from this thing that we call the world. If we do not, we are going to miss what God is saying. And it will be those small things that will cost us our lives. You hear me? I said he's calling us to sanctify our eye gate and our ear gate because when we miss or if we miss even the smallest things of God, it may cost us our lives. It's time to put the work in. It's time out for these quartet shows. It's time out. For these Amer uh, America got this time out for all these other foolish things that we've been having in the house of God that have been sustaining the work of God. And it's time for us to put our shoulders down and our face to the heart of God. It is time to put the work in. God was glad. That Solomon had completed the temple. He honored the offering. But even after the blessing, God said, is one more thing. Even after Solomon honored God, God said, but it's one more thing. Can I tell you, you cannot get so overly righteous in God that you don't hear God call you back and say, wait a minute, Audrey, I got something else to tell you. Wait a minute, Agnes, there's something else I need for you to know. As long as you are living, God is going to always be wanting to pour into you. He's always going to be one more thing. One more thing. Wait a minute, Sister Riggins. One more thing. Wait a minute. One more thing. God doesn't want us to leave anything on the table. He doesn't want us to leave anything unturned. We are living in a season where God said, I want you to get all of me that you can get because everything around you is trying to take me from you. Did you hear me? God says in this season and for the rest of your earthly life, I need you to get all of me that you can get because, excuse me, everything around you is trying to take me from you. I wish y'all could hear how I hear it. God said it's time to put the work in. That we've been playing long enough for apostle. I ain't been playing. God said, yeah, well, he understands that you hadn't been playing. He said, but it's time to amp up your prayer life. It's time to sacrifice more time to him. It's time to get for real about this thing. Not just for real because it's your worship time, but for real because it's your lifestyle. It's, it's, it's time. 
It's time for you to do what you promised God you was going to do. For those of you that fleece God and you tell God, oh God, if you do this for me, then God, I'm going to do that for you. God said that in this season, you're going to have to make good on your word. Did you hear me? But God, if you do this for my children, then I'll do this in the house of God. He said in this season, you're going to have to make good on your word. Because it's time to put the work in. God, if you give me this job, then God, I'm going this. God said, it's time to make good on your promise. Lord, if you keep me in my right mind, then God, I'll do this. God, if you get me out of that bad marriage, I'll do that. God, if you save my sister from her crazy husband, I'll do this. God said, it's time to make good on your promises. And then you wonder why your body has turned against you? Because you lied to God. You wonder why sickness is ravaging your body? Because you lied to God. You wonder why your pockets have holes in it? Because you lied to God. He said it's better that you not vow a vow than to vow and vow and not keep it. God, if you heal me this time, I won't go back and do it again. God, if you do this, God, I won't, I won't, God, I won't, if you, if you, if you. God said, I did everything you asked me to do. But you didn't show up for anything that you promised me that you were going to do. I didn't feel like coming on live today. My allergies are really doing a whammy on me this year for some reason. And it's draining my strength. I just don't have any desire to really do anything. Spirit of God told me. He said, get up and prepare yourself. Because today... You're coming into the king. Listen, I can't tell y'all. I don't anybody know me, you know I don't move fast. But when he said get get up and prepare yourself, because today you're coming into the king, I right quick got up. And I began to look through my closet to find something to put on to fix myself up. He said, prepare yourself. Because you're coming into the king. The God began to remind me that the things that I told God. That I would be willing to do if he would just use me. I didn't tell God, if you give me this, then I'll do that. If you, if you, if, I told God, use me for your glory and I'll be available to you. So I didn't have the right, even not feeling good from allergies, even being tired from working three different jobs and being a parent and doing athletics. I didn't have the right to tell God that I don't want to do live today. He said, get up and prepare yourself. Because I told him, God, if you need a willing vessel, then I will go. I didn't say I would go if I wasn't tired. I didn't say I wouldn't go if I had to do it by myself. I simply said to the master, if you need somebody, then I will go. So here I am with a tired voice. And here I am with a tired body. But my spirit is willing because I want to put the work in. My spirit is willing because I want God to be glorified. My spirit is willing because I need people to know that God is more important than your flesh. And that you have the ability to override your spirit if you so desire. Oh, I'm sorry. Override your flesh if you so desire. But you got to put the work in. And sometimes it's hard work. We're just talking, right? Sometimes it's hard work and sometimes you don't want to do the work. And sometimes you don't have the strength to do it. And sometimes you haven't studied to do it. And God said, get up anyway. Get up and get yourself together. Because it's time to go into the king. Say to God, I want to come on today and I wanted to remind you. That there is nothing that is happening in the earth. That God does not have full control over. There is nothing that is going on in your life. That God does not have full control over. And when God gets ready to make, to make the next move. There's going to be victory. Sister Riggins, I don't know you. But I hear the Lord tell me to tell you. That healing is your portion. Are you there, Sister Riggins? I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's you. 
I don't know if it's somebody that you believe in God and standing in faith with or for. But the Lord told me to tell you that faith is your, that, that healing is your portion. The Lord told me to tell you, Sister Riggins, that you have put time in. When you didn't feel like it in your body, when your mind wasn't there and you didn't even have the finance for it, God said that you put the time in. I hear the Lord say sometimes you didn't even have money for church, but that your praise was your financial blessing for the day. And that you have put time, you have put the work in. I don't know you, but I hear the Lord say that that where you have planted, you shall reap a harvest. And even in the places where you have not planted, that you shall reap a harvest. That you, the season for you being disregarded and looked over, Sister Riggins, the Lord said today has come to an end. They may never call your name from the platform, but God said today he called your name. And he blessed you and he set you apart, Sister Riggins, because you have honored him in your work. I hear the Lord, Sister Riggins, tell me to tell you, well done. Sister Riggins, I hear the Lord say to tell you well done, you have put the work in and that your work has been pleasing to God. Even when people thought you were trying to be funny or it was, it was always a little something in the background, the Lord God told me to say to you, Sister Riggins, well done. He said that you have been faithful. You have been faithful. Even when you sh didn't need to be faithful, you went the last mile. I, that's what I heard, the last mile of the way. The, today the Lord calls your name, and he redeems the time for you, Sister Riggins. Thanks to God, that is the word of God concerning you, Sister Riggins. Thanks to God, we got to put the work in. We, I feel deliverance, and I bless your name, Jesus. We got to put the work in. God wants to do a mighty move in the earth. In the next seven years. And it's going to take all of us. Pushing in the same direction. It's going to take all of us coming together. From different uh, 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 different churches. And different denominational backgrounds. To push this thing in the gear that God wants it to be in. It's going to take all of us. <coughs> putting the work in so that God can get the glory. And he sent me to tell you today, I know this is an unorthodox message. This is not even the way that I prepared it when God was giving it to me. But God told me to tell you today that you got to go back and put the work in. You got to go back and put the work in because there is a condition attached to the blessing. There are conditions attached to the blessing. And in this season, do not be alarmed when God shuts up heaven. Remember that if he shuts it up, he'll open it again. If he command the locusts to come, he'll command the locusts to go. If he allow the pestilence to come, he'll allow the, the pestilence to go. But all of it is predicated on the fact that you are willing to humble yourself, to pray, to seek his face, and to turn from your wicked ways. Saints of God, I want you to know that God loves us all enough today to remind us to get back to what matters. He loves us to remind us today to stop being in, in, over indulging in the foolish things. He loves us enough to remind us today that time is at hand. And I know people have been saying that forever, but we have to continue to, to cry loud and spare not that time is at hand. He admonishes us today to stop all the foolish side conversations and get in the face of God. Lay your head on the bosom of God. Ask God what his will is for your life in the earth and walk that out. If you are in the company of foolish people that are always from one thing to the next, the word of God said this, that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So that man may be having a conversation with you about someone else, but please know that when they leave your presence, they're having a conversation about you with someone else as well because a double-minded man 
says the word of God is unstable. Are you hearing me, saints of God? It's time to go back and do the work. And it's a hard work. Don't let people fool you and, and make you to believe that this, this work that we call salvation is easy. This is not an easy work. It's a lonely walk if you do it right. The word of God says narrow is the way that leads to heaven. He said, but great and wide is the way that leads to destruction. He said, and many travel along that way. When you're on the narrow path, you won't see many people doing what you're doing. Not if you're right, according to the word, the written word of God. You won't see many people coming to prayer meeting. You won't see many people fasting and praying, not in the narrow way. You won't see many people living holy, not in the narrow way. You'll still see people making fun of us because we go to late, late night service. You'll see people making fun of us because we pray in the tongues and we get a quick quickening every now and then. They'll still pick at us. But guess what? We're the ones that they come to when they don't have any power. We're the ones that the ones with the Nicodemus spirit come to us and ask us for prayer. We're the ones that they come and ask to bless their oil. We're the ones that they ask to touch and agree. Because they understand that we have put the work in. Say to God, I just came to admonish you and challenge you all the while. That you got to go back and do the work. John admonished us in the book of Revelation, I think it was. He said, sometimes you got to go back and do your first work all over again. Why? So that you can get it right this time. God loves us enough. To say go back. And check your work again. I remember and I'm done. When I was in the regular classroom. I would never fail when I gave a test. I would have a student that would finish in two or three minutes. And I would always tell them. Nope. Go back and check your work. Don't put your paper on my desk. Because once your paper hits my desk. I've got to grade it. I tell them. But go back. And check your work again. It never failed Pastor Thompson. Every time they went back and checked. They found something wrong. That they thought was right. My God from Zion. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. God love us enough. Not to even call the roll. On that with our name on it yet. So we can go back. And look again. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. He loved us enough. That our name was not on the death roll this morning. Because he was giving us an opportunity to go back and do it again. He was giving us an opportunity to go back and do our first works over again. He was giving us an opportunity to go back and repent again. Go back and get it right again. Go back and tell God, I need you to create in me a clean heart. I've been dirty. I've been nasty. I've been gossiping. I've been lingering. I've been lying. I've been doing everything against the will of God. But I need to put the work in. Not for my mama, my daddy, not for my children. But because God, I want to make it in. I want to walk the streets of gold. I, I want to see the, the tree that has the healing for all the nations. I want to be able to see Jesus. I want to get it right. Say to God, I'm not concerned about how crazy and off balance my family thinks I am. I'm not crazy. I'm not, I don't care about how crazy people think I am for always seeking the heart of God or how churchy people think I am because I talk about how good the word of God is and how good God has been to me. But when you have walked through the valley of the shadow of death like I have, then you understand the necessity of having to put the work in. With my last child and actually with both of my children, it was, I, I should have slipped from time into eternity, but God saw fit. To allow me to live. With my last baby. I was in, in cardiac ICU. Overnight. With my blood pressure. 267 over 167. Everything they gave me. Nothing would work for my blood pressure to break. Dead people started coming to me. Trying to get me to come back with them. 
My friend, Apostle Simmons, was sitting with me in the hospital room. And I asked her, I said, you see that? She said, yeah, I see it. I told her, I said, but I'm not going to leave. I ain't leaving yet. The saints of God from Holistic had lined the hallway of the hospital and I could hear them praying in the spirit. They were praying and trusting God for me because I had gotten to a place where I couldn't pray for myself. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm in ICU, cardiac ICU. And they're trying to get my blood pressure down enough for me to deliver the baby. And the doctor is saying, if we can just get her blood pressure down, she can live. But we can't deliver the baby. We can't deliver the baby. And all of a sudden and out of nowhere, can I tell you that my blood pressure crashed? Bam. It just went back to normal. Doctor came in. She was Hindu. She said, ma'am, who do you know? Or what do you know that has caused your blood pressure to drop like this? <laughs> She said, because anybody else in their 60s or 70s would have died, they would have had a stroke. She said, they would have had a heart attack. They would have flatlined with their blood pressure being this high for this long. She says, but who do you know? I said, Jesus. She said, it can't be. She walked out of my room. Still in ICU. She walked out of my room and she came back in and she said, Ms. Lindler, she said, everybody needs somebody to believe in. She said, so if your faith in him has caused this to happen, she said, then keep on believing. Say to God, I declare from that day to this one, it was because of the work for God that I put in that the Lord saw fit to let me live. Did you hear me? If I believe, had I not been consistent in the work and the saints of God was not covering me in prayer, that I would have closed my eyes in death that day. But the Lord saw fit to allow me to live. Saints, we got to put the work in. You never know what bill down the road your work going to pay. Do you hear me? This is why I'm always kind to people. This is why even when I'm a teacher, I'm kind to students because I want, if I'm away and can't get to my children, I want God to send somebody to be kind to my children until I can get there. I'm trying to put the work in. Are you understanding what I'm saying, saints of God? You've got to get back to the work. That is the word of God for the people of God today. Know that the work is not finished. Know that the work is not finished. Even in that moment, while I was in ICU, I knew that the hand of God was on me. It didn't matter which way it went. I knew the power of God was on my life. Saints of God, and we should live in such a way that when he shuts up heaven, we know he's still God. Amen. That is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My prayer is that I have said or done something today that exhibited the person of Jesus Christ in such a way that you made a conscious decision to go back, change your mind, and do your work all over again. My prayer is that the spirit of conviction has rested on you today in such a way that you decide, I got to change my mind. The way I'm doing things is not working. How I'm living is not pleasing to God. And I need God to open up heaven up over my head. Is that anybody's testimony? I need for heaven to stay open up over my head. And because of that, I'm willing to do the work. Amen. Amen. God, we love you and we bless you today. For the written word of God. We thank you for this talk lesson today. We thank you for the hearts that re would receive. And the minds that would be changed. For your glory. We rebuke and we bind. And we come against all backlash and retaliation. We pray God. That you would be glorified in every word that was preached today. That when we leave from this place. That we will be changed forevermore. And it will be done for your glory. Sanctify us as we leave this line. Sanctify us for your glory. Sanctify us for your glory. Let people know when we leave here that surely we have been in the presence of God. So we honor you and we glorify your name and we thank you for being Lord of all. In Jesus' name, it is so. Amen and amen. Saints of God, thank you again for being a part of what God is doing in my life and in the life of Holistic and Wagner and, and Chapin. Thank you for listening in on Sundays and hearing what the heart of God is for you and your house. Thank you for caring enough about my ministry to show up 
Thank you for your prayers and your inboxes during the week. I pray that you have been blessed by this message. Also, please keep an eye on my social media platforms. Remember, on June the 25th, we will be having our Convocation 2022, where we will get back to the kingdom mandate, where Jesus required us to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, and to give water to those who are thirsty. We are um, trying to and will bring to Wagner with us 100 cases of water. We pray that you will find it in your heart to partner with us for these 100 cases of water. If the information is on the flyer. Please see uh, uh, call or inbox evangelist LaShawn Dantzler Patterson for the information concerning the water. Cash app her the money. We'll purchase it. Tell them where you need for it to be picked up and we'll get it. And we are believing God for a hundred cases of water. We're going to preach the word. We're going to sing the songs of Zion. We're going to have a cookout. We're going to give away food. We're going to give away water. But most of all, we're going to tell people about the love, the unfailing love of Jesus Christ. This is our yearly event, our convocation 2022. Meet us at Railroad Avenue, right in the heart of Wagner, South Carolina. Amen. Saints of God, I love you. My prayer for you is that the blessings of God will come from behind and overtake you on this day and the remainder of your life. It is so in Jesus name. Until next time, be blessed.